Poor Democrats think that they finally found the missing piece to the puzzle after all this time and can now prove their Russian collusion conspiracy theories are all true. After longtime Trump associate Roger Stone has revealed that in May of 2016, he did meet with someone who turns out they were from Russia, a Russian national, who was offering dirt on Hillary Clinton in exchange for $2 million. Clown News is reporting, former Trump operative Roger Stone met with Russian who wanted $2 million for Clinton dirt. The Washington Cop Post says that Trump associate Roger Stone reveals new contact with Russian national during 2016 campaign. It's all over. It's making headlines across the country and Twitter's going nuts, but as usual, the Democrats are missing the key point of the story because... Here's the text message exchange between Roger Stone and Trump campaign associate Mike Caputo after Stone's big conspiracy meeting to get the dirt. Caputo asks, how crazy is the Russian? Roger Stone responded, he wants big money for the info. Waste of time. Mike Caputo responds, the Russian way. Anything interesting at all? Roger Stone, no. <laughs> So it appears that this guy who used a fake name when he set up his meeting with Roger Stone was either trying to scam $2 million out of President Trump for this dirt on Hillary, which he didn't even indicate remotely what it was, or this guy appears to also possibly be another FBI informant, and this may be another attempt to try to frame up the Trump campaign as conspiring with Russians to try to get dirt on Hillary Clinton. And based off of this text message exchange between Mike Caputo and Roger Stone, it appears that even before the meeting, they were extremely skeptical about this crazy guy. And then after the meeting, he said it was a total waste of time and didn't even learn anything interesting. But of course, the Democrats think that this is more evidence of a massive conspiracy. By the way, if you missed my video on Friday about Father's Day and how the liberals want to have it abolished because it perpetuates gender stereotypes and it's just too offensive, you have to go and see it to believe it. I won't repeat the info in this video, but I do have some more Father's Day craziness I want to share with you. Target, the big box retailer, and maybe other stores, were selling a baby daddy card, and so they got complaints after a black woman took a picture of it and posted it on her Facebook page and said it was racist and stereotyping black dads as being absent fathers or not being married to their baby mama. This from Clown News, Target pulls baby daddy greeting card from stores after customer complaints. And the card manufacturer took to Twitter to apologize for their offensive card. They responded to a woman who tweeted at them complaining about it. And she now put her account on private. But here's the response. Thank you for raising this concern and bringing it to our attention. This card was intended to be a playful husband card. But we have notified the product team that it missed the mark. Please accept our sincerest apologies and know we will do better in the future. First of all, the card is absolutely hilarious. Second of all, it's really the only card that fits most black women's situations, since the majority of them are single mothers. I'm sorry if facts hurt your feelings, but the facts are that 77% of black babies born in America are born to single mothers. They don't have husbands, they have a baby daddy. And if that hurts your feelings, I don't know how you're going to deal with the fact that the Center for Disease Control reports that 50% of black women have genital herpes. Again, we can't have a Father's Day without the liberal establishment attacking the normal nuclear family. And if you did miss my video on Friday, you have to go and see it. Totally different info that I'm covering here. Info like this report from CNN. He gave birth. He breastfed. Now he wants his son to see him as a man. <laughs> I'm sorry, what did that say? This is a story about a couple who just had a baby where the biological father identifies as a woman and as the child's mother and the person who gave birth to the baby identifies as a man and as the child's father. There was also a big fashion show recently by a popular designer who had all the male models struck down the runway wearing these fake plastic pregnant bellies. 
NBC News reports that this Father's Day, men are experiencing a crisis of masculinity. Well, based off of what I just saw, there's definitely a crisis going on in this country. The solution? More feminism, they say. Men experience violence and oppression because gender norms are not changing. In other words, feminism isn't killing men. Toxic masculinity is. Actually, feminism is killing people because the majority of mass shooters grow up in a home without a father. In fact, 26 of the last 27 deadliest mass shooters grew up in fatherless homes. So it's not masculinity that's killing them, it's actually a lack of masculinity. A lack of a father figure in the home to help properly raise these kids. Of course, liberals don't like facts, especially when those facts hurt their feelings, and neither does YouTube, so they demonetize a lot of videos like this, saying that they're not advertiser friendly because it's covering a sensitive issue. So I appreciate all you guys who support this channel through Patreon and PayPal and who get my shirts and my books. I couldn't do this without you. So if you enjoy these videos, I hope you'll support this channel by clicking some of the links in the description below. Go to my online store, markdice.com, pick yourself up an awesome shirt, like the Liberalism Find a Care shirt, or my new George Washington Trump shirt. Available in t-shirt, long sleeve hoodie, couple different colors and styles. So, thanks for your support, guys. Check back here tomorrow for a new report, and I will see you soon.